Good morning, everyone. My name is Winnie, a hardware engineer in Facebook. Um, today, I'm going to present in Facebook uh, OCP Next Generation Two Socket Server Tag Pass. Um, here is agenda. So we will have an overview about the server system and the motherboard, and then we were covering what are the new features for this platform, and followed by the rack implementation and questions. So TagPass is Facebook uh, next generation two socket server. Um, for this server, uh, it's with a DDR4. Uh, for this server, we have uh, two motherboard SKUs, single-sided and double-sided. They are defined by whether you have the DIMM socket on one side of the PCB or both sides of the PCB. Um, for single-sided, pretty much uh, pretty familiar that normally our motherboard, the DIMM socket on the top side only. And uh, for double-sided, uh, I will talk about more details later on. And this server uh, supports uh, front I.O. and rear I.O. And uh, Facebook, uh, pretty much we use the front I.O. only. And uh, we implement Facebook OpenBMC for this server, and it's Open v 2 compatible. Sorry. As regarding to serviceability, uh, it's always um, our goal that to make more easy to service and swap. So for example, um, you can easily swap the commodities like uh, memory, um, hard drive, add-on car, knee car, and also the SSD very easily without any tool. You can even deassemble the server system and take out the motherboard by hand. Um, there's only one thumb screw on the motherboard uh, to lock down to the chassis that you can take out by hand without tool. The only place I think you need the screwdriver is unlock the heatsink, as you know. Um, as for the sustainability, um, material selection is one of way. Um, in Facebook, we are approaching to um, for sustainability. So um, to minimize the hazardous material, um, Facebook, um, Pass is not only adhere to ROS 2.0, as you see, uh, we also strive to be beyond the compliance. Uh, we've been w working with our vendor to pilot sourcing the halogen-free uh, components for the hardware, and uh, um, also taking the learning to see how Facebook can help the industry moving forward for sustainable material. And as last bullet is about the thermal, um, I will talk about uh, our thermal team actually did a um, incredible job uh, to optimize the thermal solution. I will share some thermal data later on. Um, this is a backward compatibility compared with our last generation leopard. So as you see, we keep the same form factor, uh, 6.5 by 20 inch. And um, as for the feature wise, uh, we add a bunch of new stuff. Uh, for example, um, the NICAR, uh, we add a NIC connector B and connector C to support up to 100 gig NIC and also support the KRMS card. And um, for the boot drive, uh, we're still supporting the normal uh, 3.5 inch SATA spindle drive, but for the onboard, M dot, um, onboard M SATA connector, we change it to M.2 uh, to support M.2 NVMe SSDs. Uh, as for the PCIe uh, slot, uh, we upgrade the PCIe by 24 to by 32, uh, which makes TagPass uh, more flexible as the handle, uh, like uh, AI machine learning PCIe expansion box, or the uh, storage uh, JBot, JBOF system, like, for example, uh, Facebook Lightning system. Um, and for BMC, we upgrade the BMC chip to a speed 2500, and we add one more um, flash chip as a secure flash for BMC. Um, I will talk about how we use the secure flash uh, later on. And CPU, we upgrade to next generation CPU. The real I.O. side, uh, we double the LMAX power and uh, the PCIe by A, 2 by 16. Okay, let's get into the new features. First one is the double-sided board. Um, so double-sided means that we have DIMM uh, DIM on top side and bottom side. Um, so this is to maximize the memory configuration um, without extend your board size. So you, we have a SMT, uh, we use the SMT type of DIN, one D on top, 
and one D on the bottom side, they have a little bit shift. Um, so as this, we uh, maximize the memory configuration. As you know, the CPU, uh, the feature CPU, normally they have more and more channel and more and more DIMMs that always double-sided that you don't have to extend your board size. Um, the biggest challenge for double-sided think is the manufacturing uh, process, the reliability. So we did spend some time to, um, to study uh, the reliability on the manufacturing side. Um, so for normal PCBA view, we normally p mix the PIP, uh, PIM paste process as well as the uh, wave soldering uh, for through-hole type of components. Um, on this case, uh, the through-hole type, the uh, wave solder uh, is not practical as you see bottom side, a dim socket will be the highest component that uh, the wave, uh, the soldering wave is not able to reach the bottom side, um, the pin on the bottom side. So we decide to use the PIP, uh, pin paste process purely. Uh, we change the motherboard components to be all PIP process com uh, compatible, and uh, we've done multiple times of PCBA view, and um, it's been proved it's reliable, and we can achieve the similar yield rate um, as good as the single-sided. So uh, the lower left, uh, lower, lower right picture shows the how double-sided board sit into the chassis. Um, it's on the middle of the chassis, and uh, you, we have the commodity both sides. Um, you may have question how we service the DIM on the bottom side. So the pick, um, the answer is on the lower right picture here. Um, this is a picture of our bottom side of the chassis. So we m make the open area for all the DIM area on the bottom side. Uh, you just flip over your server and all the DIM are exposed. You can service them, any of them, easily. Okay. Um, by 32 PCIe. On the motherboard side, we use the high-speed, high-density uh, Semtag uh, connector. It's a Semtag serial uh, connector. And uh, to support both single-sided and double-sided, we have three different kind of riser to split the by 32 to do 2 by 16 or 2 by 8 plus 1 by 16. There are some features, one like here, highlight here for the PCIe connector. First one is the JTAG support. Um, this is a feature we adopt for other community to support some of the add-on card that may require um, JTAG interface uh, for use case, for example, upgrade the firmware. Um, so we have the uh, JTAG signal from motherboard BMC to connect to the PCIe slot. The second feature uh, is the host SM bus. So we have host SM bus to connect to the PCIe um, slot. Um, this is allowed the host to, to detect some of the add-on card information even before PCIe initialization done. The third feature, we also reserved one USB 2.0 port um, to the PCIe card. Um, this is a feature we adopt for our Lightning system. So the USB may be used for uh, when Telepass user has as a handle. Uh, for the downside, they may need a USB uh, interface. Last feature is regarding to current monitoring. Um, as you see, for the server motherboard, uh, except for the CPU memory, um, PCIe car will be the highest power consumption components uh, in the server. Um, so we add the, we integrate the circuit to do the current monitoring for each of the PCIe slot. Um, then uh, your BMC is able to read and report each of the PCIe car how much power, how much current that they consume. Okay, so this is a NIC connector B. Uh, we already have NIC connector A. Uh, so NIC connector B um, is another by A PCIe Gen 3 added to um, for NIC, for NIC car. Um, so A plus B, we can make the PCIe by 16 to support up to 100 gig NIC. And um, one thing I want to highlight for Connect B that uh, Connect B is not able to use uh, independently. So you, you will have a different option uh, for this case. Uh, based on your use case, you can choose either to use Connect A only to have uh, up to by A uh, PCIe or use uh, A plus B to support 100 gig NIC. NIC Connect C. 
So we have another uh, NIC connector C, 16-4 connector in between um, NIC connector A and B. Um, so, so NIC connector C connect to the motherboard um, chipset. Uh, there are four by uh, four by four KR signal connect to the chipset, and NIC connector C can be used independently to support the KR card. So, um, but either KR card or the normal PCIe NIC card, um, you can you can choose uh, based on your use case. Debug card. Um, for debug car session, I will have a separate session this afternoon, 2.30 p.m., to talk about the debug car details designs. Uh, for here, I want to highlight some of the features. Um, so TagPass is the first server to support this debug car. And um, as you can see from the picture, debug car connect to the server through the USB cable. So actually, we remapped the USB 3 signal. Um, to support this debug card, we remapped the five uh, arcs, TX, and the ground pin uh, signal to UR, I square C, and present pin to support this debug card. Um, its USB interface is pretty easy to access, um, and most important that it doesn't occupy your extra I/O space. So this debug card supports um, the uh, previous uh, Facebook. Debug card supports like the console. We have a wild console, wireless console. So we have a Bluetooth module um, built in in the debug card to support um, the console also. And traditional seven sigma LED display. Um, most important, we have a LCD panel on the debug card to show the debug message, human readable. Um, and uh, we designed this debug card as a general purpose. So you can uh, customize your BMC firmware to show the debug message by needs. So imagine that when your motherboard is not able to power on and your postcode showing 00FF, the traditional um, debug card like, cannot help anymore. With this debug card, it may tell you, oh, your 1.2 volt on the board doesn't, is not on. Go and check it. Uh, for example, during the post, um, there's many postcodes showing there, and you have to go to check the menu. But with this, this debug card, you are sh the LCD panel will show the synchronized um, postcode description um, at the same time. You don't have to check the menu again. And uh, we also have a use case that when your uh, memory is looping, um, some, some, somehow the memory has issue and not able to like initialization the memory successfully, the, the postcode were looping. The, with the debug card, it will tell you exactly which CPU, which memory DIN has the issue. You may check it. And uh, the debug card can also show some like system information. Uh, for example, um, when you plug the debug card, it will tell you your BMC IP, your um, BMC firmware version, your BIOS version, um, your key system uh, information like your CPU type, your memory type. So imagine that you can do based on your BMC firmware. And um, we also uh, developed some of the frames to, to show um, BMC critical cell or some of the critical sensors like CPU temperature, fan speed. Um, there are many use cases. Um, I will talk about more detail this afternoon. Um, again, so we remapped the USB 3 device, so it's not a it's not a standard USB 3 anymore, but we still support uh, support the USB 2.0. So when you plug the USB device, um, you will be downgraded to 2.0, but we can still use the USB device. Okay. So next one is the VGA port. Uh, this is a this is a feature we adopt um, for from the feedback. So from previous OCP Sami, we got the feedback that, uh, um, that some case they need, really need the USB, uh, we really need the v VGA port. So we um, adopt this feature, this platform, um, as the I.O. limited, so we customize the VGA connector. So you need a VGA adapter cable to support it, to connect to the monitor. Okay, fast assistant soldering. Um, as you know, CPU, um, they have a um, um, dynamic load characteristic. So sometimes the CPU don't really stay on the TDP, 
but in a very short time, you are like push re really high uh, power consumption. So faster system soldering is the way that we help to reduce the duration of the uh, peak power, and then you can limit, uh, you can reduce your power supply design capability and save some costs. So there's future, uh, there are few trigger sources for the uh, faster system soldering, overcurrent, uh, under voltage, and the hot swap controller timer. Uh, each of them can trigger the faster system soldering um, to protect the system to like overcurrent shutdown, something like that. Um, all the sources and all the events will be locked um, by the BMC and the report, and the report then. Okay, open BMC. Um, I will not talk about the details like uh, what's the Facebook open BMC detail here, but we have a separate open BMC session. So um, open BMC is a Facebook uh, BM, open, uh, open source BMC firmware. And um, this is the first time introduced to our two socket server. Uh, we open source the, um, the source call through GitHub. Okay, BMC TPM. Um, we already integrated the BIOS TPM for security um, last generation, and this generation we also integrate the BMC TPM. Um, so on Telegapass, the BMC TPM is the I2C interface, and then we designed the TPM module together with the BIOS TPM. So you can see the red uh, PCB here. Uh, we have the BMC TPM and the BIOS TPM and integrate as a TPM module together, uh, make it through. Uh, I will talk about the um, BMC TPM usage uh, on next page. So verified boot. Um, this is an important feature that we integrate for this server. Um, we want to build a secured um, BMC hardware foundation. Unfortunately, the BMC chip uh, doesn't support any kind of CPU-based rule of trust. So we come out with a solution to build a to add a secure flash here to build a ROM-based rule of trust. How does this work? Uh, so BMC now has a two flash chip. One is the or original BMC firmware flash, the other is a secure flash. The secure flash is uh, right protected. And every time when you boot, re reset the BMC, uh, we boot to secure fl flash first. In that flash, we have an essential bit of code inside of the uh, flash chip and you will get the BMC firmware from the BMC firmware flash, and then we hash the value, we check the signature. If the verification pass, then we will boot. Otherwise, we will go to the um, whatever uh, the uh, FTP side to download the golden BMC firmware. Uh, and also, at the same time, um, the hash value of the current boot BMC firmware will be saved to BMC TPM chip for later on runtime check or log file check. Um, uh, there is a one glue logic I want to highlight here is that every time uh, we reboot, uh, reset the BMC, we will reset the TPM at the same time. This is to make sure that your BMC TPM always save the latest um, boot uh, BMC firmware hash value. Okay, so thermal design. Uh, before I talk about these uh, numbers, I want to share some background about our data center thermal challenge. Um, so we're not only, so in our data center, we don't use any uh, cheater, we don't use any air conditioner. We use the natural air to cool all the servers in the data center. So there's a boundary added to our thermal solution, not only cool down the server, but we want to minimize to use the air. So in our thermal design, CFM per wire is the metric to evaluate the thermal efficiency. Uh, it, it is also linearly uh, correlated to delta T. Um, normally, we require uh, for the server delta T, we can achieve like um, 24, 25 Fahrenheit. Okay, so let's talk about these numbers. You can see for the single-sided bore, um, 86 Fahrenheit uh, ambient temperature. Um, the, for Telga Pass, we can achieve um, delta T, 33 Fahrenheit. Um, uh, 
for the CFM per watt, it's less than 0.1 CFM per watt. Um, this is really um, a great job done in our thermal team. And not only the CFM per watt, but for other thermal efficiency, we did all the tests um, under the condition that fan has the redundancy. Um, on Tiago Pass, we have two 38 millimeter fans. Uh, one of the fan fail, the other still works uh, for the server to cool in, uh, to meet the thermal um, uh, requirement, um, cooling down the system. And also, the fan power is only one to 2.5 percent of the total CPU package power. So this is a really efficient thermal design uh, for Tiago Pass. Okay, so this is the last page. I uh, will talk about a little bit of uh, OpenRack V2. Um, Tiago Pass is OpenRack V2 compatible. Uh, OpenRack V2, we have two power zones. Each of the power zones, we have a two plus one power supply to support up to 6.3 kilowatt power. And um, we have eight chassis uh, on each power zone. Each of the chassis, um, we can put in three Tiago Pass. There is a Medusa cable uh, in each of the chassis um, to one, two, one, two, three split um, to connect to the server motherboard um, press feed cable. And uh, for the whole um, rack, we can support up to 48 nodes. Yeah. All right. That's all my presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, I will be here a little bit, and then you, you can grab me offline if any question regarding to Tiger Pass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.